it's all going to zero against Bitcoin. It's going up forever, Mark. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Simply Bitcoin, the number one daily live Bitcoin only show on YouTube, Twitter and Rumble. We are on Twitch, but there's only two people that hang out over there. So tell your friends about Twitch. We cover breaking news, culture and memetic warfare. And we bring on Bitcoiners from all around the world, from the biggest names to the everyday Bitcoiner to the Bitcoin builders like today. And we will be your guide through the separation of money and state. And guess what, guys? We wick to all time high of 70K this morning. We're so back. We are so back. I, I don't have the chicken for you guys. That's Nico's chicken. Uh, so we hit the horns. We hit the horns. Anyways, as you can tell from the title, you know, very interesting short vid coming out of Nayib Bukele meeting with Mexico City's ambassador of United Arab Emirates. Uh, at least that's what we think it is. It's hard to tell who exactly it is, but it continues to fuel the rumor mill. It seems that the Middle East may have caught the Bitcoin bug and they're bucking the dollar's hegemony. So added that with the continuous rumors that the Qataris may be buying Bitcoin, that maybe someone from Qatar is the whale, the secret whale that's buying hundreds of Bitcoin a day. Who knows? I mean, at least Max Kaiser's going around and been beating the drum for months now that Qatar is getting into Bitcoin. All we know is that we may be seeing nation state level adoption of bitcoin and it's gonna heat up man you know we just hit 70k we're seeing wall street love bitcoin now we're seeing i guess maybe nation states are getting into bitcoin all we know is that bukela is doing some networking and it's only a matter of time until someone else announces that they are embracing bitcoin and then in the numbers guys we saw some clips come out of jay powell getting grilled of jerome powell getting absolutely grilled last night you know, while everyone was distracted by the hate of the union, I mean, the state of the union, we got some great clips coming out from Jerome Powell. One of them was Cynthia Lummis asking him some hard questions that he didn't seem to have the answers to. And I'm not going to play that one. It's on our Twitter. You guys can go check that out. The one I want to play for you guys today is is Jerome Powell acknowledging the CBDC question, what their intention is, and whether a CBDC is ready to be deployed or whether they're going to deploy a CBDC. And today is going to be a perfect day for that because we've got a very special guest and we're going to drop the sauce for you guys. So before I go on, guys, as you can tell, I'm hosting the show. Nico's internet got cut off last night after the show. They were doing some work and apparently, you know, they're trying to stop the signal, boys and girls. So Nico be back on Monday, but I got our boy Chris Alamo. I forget what how I introduce you all the time. Uh, lover, Bitcoiner, uh, friend of man and beast. How you doing, Chris? What's going Dude. on? What what what's your title again? Programming at Swan now. Yeah, pro programming there. manager over at Swan. You know, shares the bed with Option conferences. You know, <laughs> whatever the title you want to give me, but always happy to be here, man. <laughs> yeah, it's always great when you come on, Chris. You know, I, I give the left side of the bell curve take and you give the higher IQ take, you know, it's a good synergy here. Good synergy here. Anyways, as I was telling you guys, we got a very special friend today. We got Evan Kaloudis, founder of Zeus on today. So we got a builder, guys. We're going to talk about lightning. We're going to talk about what Zeus is going. And again, the you know, talking about Jay Powell and the release of CBDCs, who better could we bring on than someone that is actually building the infrastructure for lightning and layer twos, competing, literally competing with the CBDC systems and PayPal and all that stuff. Anyways, Evan, how are you doing this morning? Doing great, Dopi. Uh, just glad to be on the show. Uh, just ready to shoot the shit and kick off this weekend the right way with you guys. Let's go. This is the way. This is the way. All right, guys. This is going to be a great show. But before I move on, of course, we got to plug our sponsors that keep the bills on. Make sure you guys are going to BitcoinWell.com. This is the best place to stack some Bitcoin. They have self-custody by default, enabling independence, no VC funding. This is the way. And also, guys... They want to get your feedback. So help us make this the best self-custody platform, period. And of course, 
if you sign up today and basically till the having, you are in for the Bitcoin jackpot contest where you can win a bunch of cool prizes. The next one that's going to be announced is The Hidden Cost of Money, a book written by Seb Bunny. And I'm pretty sure I'm, I'd have to fully, fully verify this, but you have till block height 833,679 to win this prize and some leaking some alpha. I guess next week, guys, if you delay this week, next week, you will be in the running for a stamp seed kit so scan the qr code and you can be in the chant to win millions of sats guys i i I, if i'm remembering correctly the jackpot is at 2.3 million sats you will win 69 percent of that and just keep referring your friends if you are already signed up you will you will have to initiate your your uh your access to the jackpot but also 10% 10% of that jackpot is going to go to a geyser project that you choose. So go to bitcoinwell.com or scan the QR code and you'll go directly to the jackpot. Anyways, guys, we got a we got a good show for you guys. So let's get into it. The Bitcoin numbers. Is your Bitcoin in cold storage really secure? Is your seed phrase really secure? Stamp Seeds Do It Yourself Kit has everything you need to hammer your seed words into commercial grade titanium plates instead of just writing them on paper. Don't store your generational wealth on paper. Paper is prone to water damage, fire damage. You want to put your generational wealth on one of the strongest metals on planet Earth, titanium. Your words are actually stamped into this metal plate with this hammer and these letter stamps. And once your words are in, they aren't going anywhere. No risk of the plate breaking apart and pieces falling everywhere. Titanium stamp seeds will survive nearly triple the heat produced by a house fire. They're also crush proof, waterproof, non-corrosive and time proof. All things that paper is not allowing you to hodl your bitcoin with peace of mind for the long haul stamp your seed on stamp seed you already know the deal guys scan the qr code don't leave your seed phrase on a piece of paper in your sock drawer like everyone else make sure it's on something that is indestructible like titanium all right guys we're over here on clark's moody's dashboard of course going through the numbers and i you know nico we start with the price but i start with the most important number which is the block height it's almost like bitcoin is working exactly as designed tiktok next block we are currently at a block height of eight hundred and thirty three thousand seven hundred and sixty six and the bitcoin price you know we did wake to 70k this morning we saw a pullback to I don't know what it was like 67 or something it, it seems to be retracing a little bit we're at a current Bitcoin price in dollar terms of $68,350 which means the sats per dollar aka how much Bitcoin you can buy for a single dollar aka how much a dollar's worth in Bitcoin is currently at 1,463 sats and just to trigger the chat it is Friday it's 146 bits all right anyways the total percentage of Bitcoin that will ever be issued is 93.56 percent the market cap of Bitcoin in dollar terms is 1.34 trillion. So we are above if I you guys can fact check me on this. We are above the silver market cap officially. You know, hopefully we maintain this price and we can continue to dunk on all of the precious metals bugs out there. I've been seeing people telling other people that buying silver is a good buy. Uh, anyways, I'm, I'm not going to get triggered this early in the morning. Anyways, to realize monetary inflation, taking fiat currencies to school, Bitcoin is currently at 1.74%. The Bitcoin versus gold market cap, we are this close to get to 10% of the gold market cap. We are at 9.74%. The total public lightning capacity at least according to Clark Moody, is 4,358.44 BTC. The hash rate the last 90 days is 543.5 exahashes. And the pending fees, guys, maybe you gotta, you maybe you want to think about opening some lightning channels or consolidating some UTXOs over the weekend. It's currently at 9.86 BTC. And the halving estimate. We're not hitting the meme date yet. You know, the, the take some hash rate off the network, miners. We need to make sure we hit the meme date right now. April 19th, 2024, we are 6,234 blocks away. And then, of course, some spot Bitcoin ETF updates. And today's, uh, I think it's going to be a very interesting end of the day. I'm sure we'll get the numbers by Monday. 
But again, dude, BlackRock wants your Bitcoin. Wall Street wants your Bitcoin. There is a lot of attention going to Bitcoin. There is a lot of demand for Bitcoin. You can see, remember yesterday, I think we were at 186,000 Bitcoin in the iShares Trust. Today, we're at 191,132. Fidelity's keeping up with 122,952 Bitcoin. And they're just nuking everyone head and shoulders above the rest of the competition. So it looks like we're seeing some clear winners in the spot bitcoin etf and i want to point something out guys this number i shares bitcoin trust 191,132 bitcoin remember michael saylor currently hodling 193,000 bitcoin it took him what three to four years to get to that number it took blackrock what six weeks i know saylor's doing another buy so you know maybe he can stay ahead of the game but man Blacks, BlackRock and Wall Street, they want your Bitcoin. They want as much Bitcoin as possible. Hence why we probably wick to 70K and pull back. You know, everyone wants cheap sats. Everyone wants cheap sats. All right, guys. Anyways, on today's numbers, we got a great clip coming out from, uh, I, I don't know where this was, but some kind of uh, grilling over here of Jerome Powell. Oh, banking committee on monetary policy, as we say here in the tweet. Uh, there's another clip that came out. Shouts out to Cynthia Lummis. She grilled Jerome Powell. But this is the clip I want to talk about today because we constantly cover what is going on with CBDCs, why CBDCs are dangerous, why you should literally be terrified about a CBDC. And Jerome Powell, he literally acknowledged the CBDC question. So let's play this clip here. It's a great clip. And then, of course, we got some, some right side of the bell curve takes from Chris and Evan today. So you already know what I'm going to say. Just buy Bitcoin, take it into custody. But let's hear what Jerome Powell has to say on the subject. I'm going to bring up another topic. I don't know that's been brought up today. And that, that's central bank digital currency. I think from a lot of my friends out there, I think there's some, well, I know there's some confusion. I mean, I, I'm easy to confuse. But there are a lot of people that get confused about what is meant by the administration's, you know, admonition to, to continue researching, experimenting, looking at some sort of, a, you know, uh, central bank digital currency, people, I think people back home look at that and go, oh my gosh, you know, they're going to control this now. Um, and could you maybe just differentiate a little bit what people think of in terms of a, a Bitcoin or, or their held digital currencies versus what a central bank digital currency, who, in my view, should emulate cash, right? It's It still should be about the dollar, not about some different kind of currency. Could you just sort of help people back home better understand uh, why they shouldn't try. be quite so frightened? For, first of all, I want to say that we're, we're nowhere near recommending or let alone uh, ad adopting a central bank digital currency in any form. But the idea is That's that right. as technology has evolved, money has become digital. So, um, but the government doesn't issue digital money. It's digital. If you look at your bank account, people don't hold those physical dollars. They're digital. So the thought was that the government could create a digital form of money that people could then transfer among themselves. Now, of course, that raises a concern that, that if, you, if that were a government account, that the government would see all your transactions. And that's just something we would not, we would not stand for or do or propose here in the United States. That is how, uh, how it works in China, for example. But that's not what we're, what we're if we were to ever to do something like this, and we're a very long way from even thinking about it, we would do this through the banking system. The last thing we would want, we, the Federal Reserve would want, would be to have individual accounts for all Americans or any Americans for that matter. Only banks have accounts at the Fed, mm -hmm. and that's the way we're going to keep it. So it's, it's just really, it's a question of, of following technology as it evolves and in a way that serves the public better. Uh, people don't need to worry about a central bank digital currency. Nothing like that is, is remotely close to happening anytime soon. That was very helpful. Thank you, Ms. Chairman. That was actually very helpful. You know, as much as my knee-jerk reaction is I don't trust anything that Jerome Powell says, uh, it is very helpful and really goes to show that Bitcoin is it's it's too small to lose in this race. Bitcoin, you know, it's gone out of the gate 15 years old. There's no, no amount of competition from governments. And you, you guys know my take. I, I, I fundamentally say all the time governments are incompetent, even the Federal Reserve out there. Even if they did ship a CBDC, I'm sure it won't even 
compete with Bitcoin. We've seen a real life example out in Nigeria that people don't want a CBDC. And I mean, to his point, like money's already digital. So I find it interesting that even Jerome Powell is like, yeah, that it's not even close. But then again, my tinfoil hat Bitcoiner, you know, sense in me comes out and like, are they playing cover here? Are, are, are they trying to gaslight us here? What's going on? Are, are they about to ship it? And they're being like, no, guys, don't worry about it. We're not going to ship a CBDC. It, it's not even in the works. It's not even close. I don't know. All I know is, guys, they can't compete with Bitcoin. So even though they're saying this publicly, I think it's still important for us to be skeptical about what's going on over there. But hey, it's there's Jerome Powell himself is saying exactly what us Bitcoiners have been saying for a while. They can't compete on the free market. Even if they ship a CBDC, it won't compete with Bitcoin. Bitcoin is the only thing that will literally not only improve the monetary policy, but it separates money from state. And like, no, no, no hold on. oh man, no amount of Federal Reserve shit coining is going to change the fact that Bitcoin is the clear winner in the quote unquote digital currency race. And of course, guys, you already know the deal. This isn't about improving payments. Far from improving payments is what we're about. But anyways, enough of my left side of the bell curve take. I want to get Evan's take and then we'll get Chris's take. Evan, what's your stop watching this video? I think just number one, we're just really far out from this actually happening. Uh, you got to think about the dynamics of how money is circulated through the economy, how it's created. And that all happens uh, through the um, the regional banks, right? So like those guys have to be flattened first uh, in order for a new system of money creation and issuance to be put in place. So, you know, we're seeing a lot of these smaller guys, um, you know, struggling, you know, these small regional banks, their stocks are, you know, taking a hit this week. But they really need to be all leveled out and only, you know, just the big guys like the JP Morgans of the world have to be the only survivors for a transition to like a true CBDC uh, to happen, at least in my opinion. Um, that being said, I, I think that, you know, the people in power are pretty happy with the existing arrangement of how money works today. It's already digital, right? Like, you know, most dollars don't exist in paper form. Um, most payments in retail are captured already uh, through the Venmo's, PayPal's, credit cards. That's all monitored already. And the intelligence agencies have their eyes all over that. And um, yeah, uh, let's talk about the CBDCs as they exist right now. Uh, Tether. No one's talking about this. Tether uh, is working directly with the Department of Justice and the Treasury. And they'll go shut down whoever's Tether account that they need. Um, so, uh, you sort of have an ideal situation where you can sort of control the on and off ramps onto, uh, you know, the corporate CBDCs, uh, and you're also not pissing off the regional commercial banks by kicking them out of business and just rolling out the CBDC. Um, and, uh, you know, I think there's always going to be a level of apprehension, uh, from the banks to rolling something out like this, because like we've seen in places like Nigeria, there could be such a uh, resistance to it. It could cause a social upheaval and really things are good for them right now. They're close to the money spigot, you know, they're, you know, enriching themselves. Uh, why shake the boat? Like why rock the boat if you don't have to? And I think it's going to really take some sort of uh, major financial disaster, inflation, really getting out of control, the need for something like UBI to be instated for the CBDC to really come around in the United States. So I, I wouldn't worry about it too much, but um, who knows? Things can escalate quickly, especially in this Bitcoin bull market cycle. And, uh, you know, they'll be really, really quick to blame Bitcoin for uh, <laughs> all the inflation we have, despite them being the ones who are just incessantly printing money and giving it to their friends. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's really a, a can of worms uh, as far as, what he said about privacy, uh, there might be a level of truth to that. Like I could envision them rolling out some sort of e-cash like system where you don't have insights into exactly where you're spending your money per day. However, the second that you become a problem, uh, you get removed from the system and you can't receive any more money in. Um, so maybe that's the balance they strike uh, when they eventually roll this out. But, you know, the control freaks are going to want as much inside and view as possible um, and can be backdoored. And, of course, a system like this will definitely not be free and open source like our beloved Bitcoin. Uh, so, you know, how are we going to verify those claims? 
they already lied to us about how elections work and elections are rigged left and right. Uh, the systems that we cast our votes on are all proprietary and closed source. So you have no way of verifying your vote. And similarly, you're not going to be able to verify these CBDC systems or, uh, you know, the mechanisms behind them. So, of course, you can't take them at their word. And and one thing's for sure, Evan, uh, great, great analysis. But one thing's for sure, a government needs an emergency to really, you know, usher in such groundbreaking technology and, and really shake the boat. So we're, I don't think we're there yet. But, hey, we have been hearing the rumors of, uh, you know, Klaus Schwab, my cyber attacks coming and all that stuff. So mm -hmm. who knows what happens if the financial system really does get rocky moving into election season? They wouldn't be surprising if they just like drop something, you know, just ship something and be like, okay, hey, oh, I know we told you that we weren't going to drop a CBDC, but look at us now. We did, we're working so hard in the back end. We shipped this in three months. Oh man, crazy, yeah, crazy like, stuff. Yeah, I, I just, uh, that's definitely a possibility. I, I just say like my takeaway is like, remember guys, you got, it's two sets of interests we're really balancing. And, and I think a lot of people, especially, you know, when they go to the left and right side of the political spectrum, uh, they sort of lose sight of this. It's like, it's two interests. It's, it's the people in power, the government, right? But it's also the corporate interest, the people who have capital and money. Uh, and you, you got to sort of keep both of them happy, right? Because, you know, people with money and power are the ones uh, writing the laws and uh, the lawmakers want to get money and capital from the people who have it already. And it's sort of like a gross, <laughs> incestuous relationship. So uh, when you know, thinking about the incentives of rolling something out, you need to think about, um, you know, both sides of the spectrum. Yep. 100%. 100%. All right, Chris, what's your thoughts on that clip? Yeah. Uh, I'm kind of going to be like Evan kind of give the black pill and then I'll give the, uh, the orange pill after it. So, uh, like Jamie diamond kind of like buried the lead. Like basically he said, he tweeted out like a week ago or very recently or said on one of the news shows, he's like, yeah, I'm all right with regional banks start like consolidating into each other. What Jamie diamond's really saying is I bought all the good shit and I'm glad if like the little fucking younglings of these regional banks consolidate into each other. And then whichever one I like the most I'll buy if they're in a distressed asset, but let's be honest. I mean, they got the first right into Silicon Valley Bank. You know, J.P. Morgan Chase basically got to acquire that on pennies on the dollar with the backstop from the Federal Reserve. Next black pill, kind of along what Evan was saying. You know, everyone's like, oh, my CBDC. Like, yes, they're bad. They're horrible. I don't want them. But let's be honest. We have a de facto CBDC right now. Look at the Canadian truckers up in, what, January or February of 2022. You know, we don't have CBDCs. It's Canada doesn't have CBDCs, to my knowledge. But they closed their bank accounts down. They shut off their credit cards. They turned off their insurance. They stop them from receiving payments like, you know, for Venmo, Cash App, you know, GoFundMe, uh, Give, Send, Go, you, you name it. So at the end of the day, like we don't have CBDCs, but we have like the second closest thing to CBDCs. If you don't think the credit card companies give over the information willy nilly to the FBI, the Federal Reserve, you know, and anyone in the government who asks for it, I think you'd be crazy because they just don't want to go up against the system and have that turned against them. Uh, the orange pill moment now. Thank God we live in the time of Bitcoin. Uh, you know, shout out to Satoshi, all open source devs. You know, we really stand on the so shoulders of giants. Uh, you know, uh, Opti and I are LARPers, where uh, <laughs> Evan here is a true developer. So my kudos to him. I just kind of talk about Bitcoin. I love it. But, you know, acquire some Bitcoin. Non-KYC is preferable. You know, learn to use the toys, such, uh, tools such as PayJoin, CoinJoin. Like, we're trying to fight the system. And to Evan's point, we're going up against a behemoth, not just in the government, not just in you know the banks that are currently there, J.P. Morgan Chase and all that, like Tether, CBD, uh, C, uh, USDC, like all of these stable coins, like oh, like yo, use my stable coin dollar. It's like, bro, are we trying to take down the petrodollar or are we trying to be co-opted by it? So uh, my boy Mark Goodwin has a great book. You know the Bitcoin, uh, the Bitcoin dollar talks a lot about the issues with stable coins and Bitcoin and like ways that Bitcoin could not fail but could be co-opted. Uh, and I think that we should just be fighting that at all costs. So that's my rant. Orange pill, totally. get get on the uh, the orange coin, get some non KYC coin, learn how to self custody yourself. Don't use the uh, layer two uh, ETFs that BlackRock is offering you. That is not true. Layer two, use Evan Kalutis's, uh, yeah. you know, Zeus wallet as your preferred layer two. Check your backups. Check, Check your backups. Your backups. One hundred percent. I mean, Chris and and Evan, you guys hit the nail on the head, and it really. 
It really blows my mind how people don't understand that money is already digital. And like this is in in my in my opinion, like rolling out a CBDC is, is more like theater art than anything. It's just like theatrical. And at this point, it's like we, we're basically already in a CBDC system. So who knows where where this goes? But this is why we are a Bitcoin only channel, because uh, we're already F if you're not out of the traditional financial system. So stack some stats today. Make sure you're taking that Bitcoin into custody. The best way to not get burned. The Daily News. I want to give a shout out to our sponsor, Foundation Devices. It's self-custody done right. They built a premium grade hardware wallet called Passport right here in the US. It's fully open source and verifiable. It's the most intuitive Bitcoin wallet designed with a UX reminiscent of a simple feature phone. So you will know how to navigate it and use it the moment you pick it up. Get your Bitcoin off exchanges and into your into your own hands in just a few minutes. Experience the peace of mind that comes with taking ownership of your own keys. After a massive sellout during Bitcoin Miami 2023, the passport is back in stock at foundationdevices.com. Bitcoin only, open source verifiable, completely air gap security model, gorgeous design craft, premium grade materials. If you're thinking about getting your Bitcoin off exchanges, this is the one for you. Check out the passport link in the show notes below to learn more. Scan the QR code. Get yourself a Nokia phone. They're sexy. Anyways, Chris, I I, uh, I, I cut you off. What were you saying? I was going to say the best way to get out of the traditional financial system is to not have, have any fiat. If you're overdrawn your bank, that's the best way to be it. You know, all in, get on zero. <laughs> get unironically on zero. This is the way. <laughs> this is the way. All right, guys. So let's get into this news story. As you guys can tell, everyone ever in the chat already is like, you haven't even talked about the oil money yet. Guys, it's just the format of the show. Anyways, I want to kind of lay some context here. We've been covering this for a couple of weeks. Go check out Rustin's video. He did it. I think it was like like a week or two ago about the potential or the speculation and rumors about Qatar buying some Bitcoin or the Qataris out there buying some Bitcoin. And so this signal is starting to spread even on the mainstream media, even on the corporate press. They are they're basically talking Bitcoin bullish signals. So I'm over here on Forbes, guys, and you can see that they're even saying what we're saying on Twitter. They're speculating. They're getting bullish. And I just highlighted a few portions and I'm going to go into a little more of the receipts. So here on Forbes, we got the classic it's happening meme huge mystery well and sudden $65,000 Bitcoin price surges fuels secret sovereign bid and tech billionaire prediction so you guys can read this on Forbes but I just highlighted a few things and it's really a testament to Max Kaiser's cultish personality and his bombastic you know e eclectivism or eclectic this doesn't, I don't know. Anyways, Max is saying Qatar may have added Bitcoin to their balance sheet, says Anthony Scaramucci. If true, all we can say is thank you, Max Kaiser. And then we got Caitlin Long quoted in Forbes going, I caught up with a big Bitcoiner investor in Bitcoin infrastructure companies who said he doesn't think this is a rally all about the spot ETF. Meanwhile, an unknown mystery Bitcoin buyer has amassed $3.2 billion worth of Bitcoin over the last year, gathering a pile of almost 55000 Bitcoin in transactions of 100 Bitcoin since April of last year. I think it's interesting that they've generally received the same amount on every transaction, about 100 Bitcoin. Man, it'd be so nice to just be buying 100 Bitcoin at a time. Stacking stats at 100 Bitcoin blocks. Legendary. And then again, on Tuesday of this week, we got Yahoo Finance going, is Qatar Sovereign Wealth Fund ready to adopt Bitcoin? And just reading a little bit here, it says, over the weekend at Bitcoin Atlantis, the biggest source of the speculation was the attendance of one of the emir of Qatar's private jets and rumors suggested that representatives from the oil rich state were there to hear the Bitcoiners pitch. The Qataris may be considering investing some of the country's energy profits into the assets and the rumors were given more attention when again Scaramucci explained on Twitter that the Bitcoin legend Max Kaiser has been convincing them to join El Salvador's Bitcoin adoption strategy. So let's go over to some of these tweets. Here you guys go. There is a screen 
screenshot of the Qatari private jet at Madeira in Bitcoin Atlantis. Nico told me it was a beautiful conference. Hopefully I make it next year. And then Max Kaiser just getting stupidly bullish on Twitter. And you just love to see it. I, I love this kind of bullishness on Signal, even, even if it is some speculation. But we've been seeing this conversation for a while. You know, Naib Bukele talked to the Emir of Qatar in September of last year. It seems like his networking may be playing out. It seems like maybe the Middle East is getting bullish on Bitcoin. And after that screenshot of the private jet, you know, Max Kaiser goes, God candle incoming source. President Naib Bukele orange pilled the Emir of Qatar again. You know, just keep doubling down. Max Kaiser, it's happening. It's happening meme. Everyone's getting bullish. We're all speculating whether they are buying Bitcoin or not. Even more, it's happening. And here's a quote from the finance, the Yahoo Finance uh, article where you see Anthony Scaramucci. Max is saying Qatar may have added Bitcoin to their balance sheet. If true, we can all thank Max. And he just continues to go. It's happening. And then the last one of Max here is, you know, we got this article of Zero Hedge again. They're all talking about who is buying all of this Bitcoin. And Max just drops the Qatar flag emoji on Twitter. And then this morning we got Max with Arab God Candle incoming. I told you so. F you money. And I really like the quote tweet from our boy, Dr. Bitcoin MD. And he goes, Westerners do not comprehend the amount of wealth that's about to flow into Bitcoin. The ETFs will pale in comparison. And of course, they're quote tweeting Naib Bukele meeting with from what our Twitter intern, the Twitter team uh, discovered is the ambassador of the United Arab Emirates in Mexico and non-resident ambassador for Republic of El Salvador, Ahmed Hatem Bargash Amahali. Forgive me. Forgive me for butchering the name. But we got a very interesting tweet from British HODL. Just dropping some numbers here. And he goes, this is big news for Bitcoin. If Middle Eastern oil nations decide to add $50 million of trading... Uh, a trading session, basically a day to Bitcoin demand flow per country. That's $12.6 billion a year per country. That would involve an additional addition to equilibrium prices of Bitcoin after having of 85470 That would mean roughly 10% of Qatar's daily oil expert. Great work, Naive. The beautiful thing about Bitcoin, it incentivizes you to share its magic even with your competitors. It inspires cooperation. And this just goes to show, guys, you know, remember last week, we were talking about um, Edward Snowden saying that he is convinced or making a quote unquote prediction that a nation state's going to adopt Bitcoin. We're seeing the rumblings, the speculations, the rumors that maybe it's Qatar, maybe it's the United Arab Emirates that's buying into Bitcoin, maybe Saudi Arabia is buying Bitcoin. All we know is. In real time, though, is that people are looking for alternatives from not only the petrodollar, but from saving in U.S. Treasury. And it just goes to show, guys, Bitcoin is the stable coin. A money that is separate from any small cabal of bankers is an intriguing proposition to everyone that understands what's going on. Who wants to be beholden to a small cabal of people that can control the money system, that can cut you off from the monetary system, that can employ sanctions on your country? Once you understand the power that Bitcoin gives you, there is no going back to fiat. You look at this game and you're like, wait, do I want to hold a money that is literally uncontrollable in the best way possible that no one can debase, that no one can censor your transactions, that has number go up technology behind it? Or do I want to continue to dabble in the dollar system? And then you add that with the idea of all the BRICS nations, again, you know, Saudi Arabia is part of the BRICS nations that are looking to literally get away from the dollar. They, they've they been rumblings this week about them installing their or deploying their own CBDC system. I don't know. All I know is that we are seeing the price react very bullish. We just looked at 70K and we're seeing a huge buyer in Bitcoin. Is this a new whale? Is this just one convicted person buying Bitcoin? The conviction levels are rising. And hey, I think we are going to see the game theory of Bitcoin really start to explode on the main street, whether that is a nation state, whether that's the, the Arab Emirates, whether that's Qatar or Saudi Arabia. All we know for sure is Naib Bukele is networking, spreading the signal, and people are looking to his country as proof that maybe a Bitcoin standard is something you want to be doing. And then as the price starts to rise, oh, hey, look at Chris. As the price starts to rise, 
everyone wants to store their value in something that cannot be debased, that improves their profits. And if that means going all in on Bitcoin, well, obviously they're going to start to do it. So it looks like the signal's spreading and uh, we'll see what happens. We'll see, I guess maybe by next month, if we see some new announcements of corporations or new pension funds adopting Bitcoin. But I'm also very convinced that this year we will get one more explosive announcement, one more explosive news story of someone big jumping into Bitcoin and you know, following Nayib Bukele's lead. As we say all the time, El Salvador is vindicated. Michael Saylor is vindicated. So it's only a matter of time until the corporations follow lead, the billionaires follow their lead, and nation states follow the lead that has been set. Absolutely bullish for Bitcoin. But let's get Chris's take because I'm just bullish left side of the bell curve today. Chris, I know you follow the news pretty closely. What's your thoughts on all this? Uh, yeah, I think there is a chance that it could be, you know, UAE, Qatar, Saudi Arabia. I'm throwing out this other idea, put, put, putting my hat on. This is just complete speculation. Don't know if it's true. Don't know the guy at all. But let's talk about our guy, Jeffrey Bezos. This guy, you know, steps down as CEO to step up into chairman of the board. He's just chilling, getting jacked, eating meat. You know, maybe put on tinfoil hat and say, you know, April of, you know, last year, he's like, all right, I'm going to start buying this Bitcoin thing, buying $100 a clip. He recently sold about a billion dollars worth of Amazon shares. And then Mr. 100, uh, 100 Bitcoin whale all of a sudden puts 1300 you know, buys 1300 Bitcoin in. So I'm just saying the math kind of works out. That's like what, like $69 million worth of Bitcoin. You know, Jeff Bezos, if he's sitting at $100 billion in cash, this guy's not an idiot. He's like, I got to put it in an asset. You can't just have that sitting in cash. That's a melting ice cube. Michael Saylor's taught me that. So uh, my thought, my thoughts, maybe it's Jeffrey Bezos. He's in the check engine light gang. I talked with uh, Jay, you know, he was driving around in an old 1993 Honda Civic when he was worth over a billion back in the early 2000s when Amazon was ripping in the, in the dot-com boom. So this guy gets the deal. He's, a, you know, jacked, working out, eating meat, driving old cars. So I wouldn't be surprised if Jeffrey Bezos, don't, don't put it past him. Yeah, I mean, we've been speculating on that for a while, but like the real signal there is is not necessarily him buying Bitcoin, but them divesting out of their stocks, getting into dollars, finding other ways to store their value, which really, if you're thinking, if you're thinking cap still on, it's like, why are they so, so scared of having all their money in their stock prices? Well, it looks like the traditional financial world isn't as healthy as they're telling us on the television and you want to find an alternative. And of course, we think the alternative is simply Bitcoin, guys. Just keep stacking Bitcoin, taking in the custody, you know, doing what Evan's doing, building on layer two and propagating the Bitcoin memes. This is how we win. And further, we're winning so hard. It's absolutely incredible. I just can't wait till we we convincingly break 70K and, and we take the victory laps. Anyways, Chris, you want to pop in real quick before we pass yeah, it on? Yeah, one quick thing before we go to Evan. What was it? I know they were talking about like the great resignation in 2021 and 2022, which was true for a lot of people. I know many people that changed jobs, lost their jobs jobs, had to get a new job and all of that. But like, if you look at it even a, a level higher, a lot of CEOs of like longstanding Fortune 500 companies or Russell 2000 companies, a lot of them resigned or stepped into different roles, you know, in that same time period of 2021, 2022. Maybe it was, you know, at the helm for a long time, looking to retire and hang out with the kids. Maybe their net worth, you know, doubled because of all the money printing into the stock market and stuff. But it was very suspect that a lot of like, even Jeff Bezos, he was like, hey, I'm stepping away or stepping up into chairman of the board, but he takes a less active role in being an operator of Amazon. So uh, very, very interesting for sure. Yeah. What's the meme? Uh, this is totally off topic before we go to Evan, but did you guys see the meme of... Um Mark Zuckerberg and and someone said like wait look the AI is becoming more human it's interesting <laughs> how you know eating eating some steak and getting jacked makes you more human at least even more approachable but hey maybe the AIs are becoming self aware in real time and we're watching it happen anyways Evan what's your thoughts on all this uh well this is a loaded one it's really hard to for me to speculate on this but I don't know at least it makes sense for me that oil rich nations are the ones getting in first um. You know, uh, not only just having so much wealth uh, to disperse and go purchase Bitcoin, but also, you know, being energy producers and being able to perhaps divert some of that effort into Bitcoin mining. Um, so that's going to be the interesting one for me as we see these nations get in. Are they just going to, you know, take dollars and buy Bitcoin or are they going to get into the mining game? Um, so we'll see on that front. But 
you know, as far as these big nation states go, it really behooves them to just keep it close to the chest and not tell anyone they're accumulating, doing it in times where the price is low and, um, you know, just trying to stack as much as you can. Uh, because when the big boys come out and say, hey, like, let's say, I don't know, uh, a Russia or a China says, hey, uh, we're in this now. We believe in it. Uh, you know, not only does it lend legitimacy to it and uh, take some value from their fiat currencies, but then all the other players are going to just trample in and start putting some of their reserves towards Bitcoin. And, uh, you know, it's going to make it more expensive for those guys to get it. Um, so we'll see. Uh, definitely excited to see some more nations adopt it in the manner that El Salvador has. We want to see more adoption. We want to have more places in the world where Bitcoiners can live off of their coins. Um, and, uh, you know, beyond that, uh, it's going to take more work than, you know, just nation states saying, hey, uh, we're cool with this. Like, we need more tools. We need more individuals accepting it. We need businesses. We need the circular economy to grow uh, to really make it viable. I was just taking your Bitcoin and selling it for fiat or converting it to a gift card uh, is really not going to be, uh, you know, ideal. Like some people are not going to have access to those rails. They're going to be cut off. Uh, so we need to make it so that you can spend and live off Bitcoin directly. Uh, so let's see. Hopefully we make some more strides in that direction. Um, it's a mix of, you know, adoption by these big guys, but also education, better tooling, um, you know, more work on the protocol side of things to make paying with lightning even smoother than it is today. Uh, long strides to go. Um, as far as the Jeff Bezos theory, uh, that's a pretty good one. Um, <laughs> well, we need, we do know it was mingling with uh, Michael Saylor on a yacht the last couple of weeks. So maybe he did get orange pilled. Yeah. I mean, uh, hell, look at the macro outlook right now. Um, if anything, you know, maybe the Fed cuts rates and tries to prop up the economy and that keeps stocks going. But at that point, Bitcoin is just going to go ballistic. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, at this point in the Bitcoin cycle, it seems like a no brainer to just ape in if you have the resources to do so. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think just behind the scenes, more and more people with wealth are are seeing the writing on the wall. They're realizing that this isn't just, you know, tulip mania like tulip mania didn't just crash 80 percent on you just draw down and then go to newer all-time highs uh you know 16 years in a row like this yeah. is completely <laughs> different entirely and those old narratives have just been destroyed uh so yeah it's going to be very interesting and uh you know obviously if you're not diversifying into this right now um you're gonna have a hard time there's not many other better places to go um real estate but at something you never really own yourself and you know you got to pay the taxes on it this year bitcoin just provides such a unique opportunity with so much upside we're talking about an asset that's probably going to be worth in the ballpark of five million dollars a coin but hell that's just measuring it in fiat fund coupons irs utility tokens Patreon. yeah why why so bearish evan why so bearish <laughs> bigger than that you know so, yeah no uh, <laughs> Uh, Opti, I just have this funny image of like Sailor and Bezos, like in a yacht, like, you know, that I, well, they're sent, surrounded by a cold card, foundation passport, like a seed signer. And they're like, all right, now you're going to put this into Sparrow. You're going to set this up and put <laughs> some cuts to your Bitcoin here. <laughs> oh, man. Crazy, crazy times. Yeah, it's uh, it's very interesting where we are right now. But this is why we, you know, to Evan's point, why we tell you guys all the time, like, it's not just enough to get the legitimacy of the these big wealth managers or billionaires or nation states. It's like the most important thing is for you guys to not only get better orange pilling and educating your friends and family, but stacking sats and taking Bitcoin into custody and making sure that they don't take all the Bitcoin. Cause as you mentioned, our boy, Mark Goodwin, uh, there is a very real threat of maybe ending up in a position where we never thought Bitcoin could, could become. And it's because of these black rocks and, you know, these nation state actors, jumping into Bitcoin and then co-opting the network and scaring and gaslighting the individuals. So it's about building out the infrastructure. Actually, before we move on, though, Evan, since we're on this topic, uh, do you think that Bitcoin will be ready for like another 2017 FOMO retail pump, like on a on a network level to user experience level? Uh, no, absolutely not. Not this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, listen, like uh 
for people to get in, like they have more options than ever. Uh, not only can you have all the same exchanges that you had last time around, but now you have the ETFs to invest in. So like getting price exposure to Bitcoin is one thing. For people with self-custody though, well, you know, we're still dealing with limited block space. It's, you know, there's only so many people that we could onboard onto Lightning Year. And uh, yeah, the, the things are still a little rough around the edges. You know, as much as I'm really proud about the product we built at Zeus, um, you know, there's a lot of learning you have to do to understand all the dynamics between, oh, this is layer one, this is layer two, um, you know, and, and this extends past having the self-responsibility hurdle of being like, you are responsible for this 12 to 24 word seed phrase and you got to keep it safe. And if anyone gets access to it, you lose your money. Um, so, yeah, we have a long way to go. There's a lot of things to be optimistic about and a lot of people's solutions to help bring retail in. It's definitely getting there. Um, but yeah, I, I really just see a whole bunch of hurdles and, you know, just let's lower time preferences. This is like going to be a, a long journey. It's going to take decades. We're probably going to be really, really old men when Bitcoin <laughs> is ubiquitous and, you know, that's okay. We got to be okay with that because, you know, progress is incremental. You got to take it one day at a time and there's a lot to be optimistic about, you know, think about yeah. who we're building this for. This isn't just for for us, you know, I, th I think us having exposure to Bitcoin this early it has already probably done, you know, wonders for us. But we got to think about the next generation and, you know, the state that we're going to leave the world in after we're gone. So, yeah. Um, yeah, just just be patient and let's not make any crazy moves in Bitcoin. Let's not just rush to activate the next soft fork just because we want to cater to noobs in this bull run like are you, are you fucking nuts <laughs> we, we have one chance to get this right and you guys are like want to add new bells and whistles just because they might work uh well you know let's have measured discussion and just be patient some of these things are going to take years and years and years to get in and come to fruition and you know that's just the nature of the beast i'm going to be here for years to come i hope you guys will be too let's go he's gonna be ready in two weeks well evan's wrong you know two weeks everything's ready in two weeks, two uh, weeks everyone let's onboard 20 million people on <laughs> my lsp is ready we definitely have enough capital to bring all those people on oh, yeah no man. we'll be ready in two weeks but I, I i echo evan's sentiment i hope we're all here as old men you know and we're telling our, our kids and our grandkids like yeah we we're sending one sat per v by transactions just getting, you know, being reckless on the lightning network. And, you know, yeah, back when Bitcoin was still at 68K and they're like, oh my God, grandpa, you're crazy. That's wild. Like, stories are insane. So I don't know. That's us in the future. Love it. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I always say it. Wait, wait, hold on. We're getting, we're getting uh, calls for some horns. So Evan, get some horns <laughs> for spitting the sauce. Oh, wait, wait, wait. And guys, I got a surprise. Opti might not have the chicken, but I do. Oh, Oh. Well, it's, it's a rooster. It's a rooster. It's a little Jerry. Okay. All right. Perfect. Here's, here's, the, here's the chicken for the day. I hope it's a spicy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I want to touch on one thing. First and foremost, it's it it's so hilarious that we still get the tulip meme. I mean, everyone everyone brings up the tulip meme every time it starts pumping, and they they completely forget that the tulip mania was a six month time frame, and we've been doing this for what fifteen years. It came back from eighty percent dips, like it's completely different, guys. Yeah, and then the most cringe one. For it's sure. the most cringe one. And then the next one is is to your guys' point. Like I say it all the time, like semi jokingly. It's like, guys, I'm convinced we're going to be doing this till like we're old. Like we're probably going to be talking about Bitcoin till the rest of our lives and us bitcoin millennials and and even the younger generation like i think we're just built different we're like yo you know number go up is cool but what really matters here is the freedom aspect of it and actually changing the course of history and and i i just i constantly see this with with uh, all of our bitcoin friends around the same age we're like yeah you know getting richer is cool and all but like the world's pretty messed up. And I was always raised on the meme of like, leave a better world. And that's what we're doing with Bitcoin. And just love Evan coming on here and being like, guys, lower your time preference. Like, let's not rush into anything. Come on, guys. Like, big picture. Uh, but, you know, also balance it with saying, hey, the world's messed up. We're not going to fix everything, right? Uh, some people think we're going to stop all wars and violence and all that shit. But, you know, we got to be realistic. Let's think about smaller scales. Let's think about the impact that we can make in the world. Let's think about our local communities, the people that we talk to day to day. Let's worry a little bit less about, you know, trying to save everyone around the whole world. Yeah, you can put out tools and, uh, you know, 
try to get this free and open source software into the hands of people around the globe. But I think the most direct impact you could have is in your local community and in your family. So, uh, you know, just seeing friends who are Bitcoiners um, making impacts locally and on a family level, starting their own families, having their own kids, um, you know, that's a really massive white pill. Uh, these boomers, they're likely not going to understand Bitcoin at all. It'll be a miracle if most of them get exposure to it in their retirement accounts or through the ETFs. Um, but we can mint new coiners who are Bitcoin native, who have exposure to wallets like Zeus and are getting onboarded. And, uh, you know, Andrea Santinopoulos said the average age that someone could get a bank account, at least in the United States, is at age 16, I believe, right? Uh, that means that you know, let's say you give a kid a phone at eight or 10, that's like six to eight years in which you can give them experience to a Bitcoin only world. Uh, let us make it so that they never even consider getting a bank account. That when they think of about the prospect of going down at a bank branch, sitting down in a chair, passing over an ID and doing paperwork, that's just completely disgusting to them. Um, so, you know, let's start them young and, uh, you know, let's start thinking about the next generation and stop forgetting, uh, start forgetting about, you know, these boomers that, you know, have limited time. <laughs> Love it. Now, now I'm literally, I, I always get trolled in the chat of like, uh, Opti hates the boomers. And it's like, no guys, I'm just being a little forward thinking, you know, nature has a course here and we have a lot of people that are going to grow into a Bitcoin system. And they had their time, right? Like we don't hate <laughs> And they just had their time, all right? <laughs> now, now, now let's make good time for the people to come. That's it. Yeah. It's facts. 100% facts. And uh, let, let's see, you know, before we move on to Chris and I'll let you jump in, you know, what sounds either sitting down at a bank teller, giving them all your information or just downloading Zeus right now, literally from the app store. Like it's super simple. Anyways, Chris, jump uh, yeah, in. Yeah. The, the banks, like uh, I, I like <laughs> my, my bank that I set up for my LLC to get, to get paid as a contractor before I started the, the business. Like they, they treat me decent enough, but like before I pulled down my pants and like showed them how much money I had, <laughs> <in the laughs> they treated me like a criminal. But I'm, they're like, wait a second, you're a, you're a you, dressed in match up here. You definitely like, look like mean? one. <laughs> like, well, it's it's just the worst UX, and um, you know, I, the only real challenge is the personal responsibility that comes along with it. And uh, you know, we live in a world where that's sorely lacking. If we can just instill those values of personal responsibility, taking responsibility for your actions. Um, no one like instilling the message that no one is going to save you. You got to lift yourself up. If we can instill that to the younger generation, then, you know, we're going to win handily. So let's just keep doing it. Love it. Love it. See, we're getting yelled out by the boomers. Yeah, I was gonna say, the boomers are in the chat right now and they're pissed, but I, I guess my <laughs> one last thing, and it's a very quick point is my favorite chart on Twitter is uh, in 2017 when they're talking about tulip mania and they overlaid like four different crises, tulip mania and the Bitcoin crash. And they're like, see, they're all going to zero. And then all of a sudden when you update the chart for 2021 and like literally it's like Bitcoin's the only thing that like skyrockets past the all time <laughs> high. I think that's like one of my favorite charts to show. Like this is not tulip mania. We're not going away. Stay humble, stack sats. We are not going away. Anyways, guys, before we move on and we have a conversation about Zeus, let's talk about our boy Brian DeMint's book, Bitcoin Evangelism. As you can tell, guys, we are all basically TV evangelists in Bitcoin and we need to onboard the world. Make sure you are talking about Bitcoin in a way that connects with people. This is what it's all about, guys. I, I know you like the verbal diarrhea and your Bitcoin rant, but meet people where they are. And this book by our boy, Brian DeMint, get it on Amazon or hit him up on the Orange Pill app. You can buy it for sats. And it gives you the good talking points to get your shit coiner friends into Bitcoin, get your no coiner friends into Bitcoin. This is what we got to do. We're, we're all evangelists for Bitcoin. We're all trying to get the world on Bitcoin. So have some good talking points for your friends and family so you don't sound like a complete lunatic when you talk about that. But anyway, let's get into the culture. We got a lot to talk about. The Daily Culture. Of course, guys, last plug, scan the QR code, go to Kaboom Racks, Kaboom Racks. Best way to buy, sell, and host your Bitcoin mining equipment. Get in touch with their team. My boy Alex over there is going to probably convince you not to buy ASICs, but if you're on the fence and you've been wondering whether you should buy some ASICs, whether it's a good time, whether you should be bullish on the latest ASICs projects, 
get in touch with the Kaboom Racks team and they will onboard you and answer all of your questions. I absolutely love the team over there. All right, guys, let's get into some conversations with Evan. Uh, we already kind of touched on some of this. So, Evan, ha- actually, let's let's start with uh, before we go to your website and everything. Let's just kind of go back to what is the state of lightning right now? You know, we saw Wallet of Satoshi pull it out of the U.S. I saw you drop ship a new a new update that is improving the user experience and the user interface. So where are we right now with lightning? Will lightning on board that what 7 billion people, 8.7.5 billion people. Where are we at? What's your takes as a lightning developer, as someone building on the inside, where are we at the current state of things? Well, we're definitely not going to onboard 8 billion people, at least. (laughs) (laughs) So let's get that out of the way. Um, yeah, we were looking at an image that Todd Drea, um, he is one of the co-creators of the Lightning Network spec, or not the spec, uh, just the concept, right? Uh, he spoke at Baltic Honey Badger, and he had a slide about how many people we could onboard onto Lightning. I think at max, if we max out every block uh, with batching, we could potentially onboard something like 265 million people a year with like something like million sat channels. Um but more realistically, it'd be something like 20 mil a year. But hell, that's still a lot of people to onboard into Lightning in a self-custodial manner. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think uh, we're nearly near that in terms of self-custodial users. So we still have room to grow. Um, but yeah, this year is really interesting. Um, we're seeing more regulatory pressures. People like Wallet of Satoshi getting out of markets like the US, uh, many companies just not choosing not to ship in the U.S. at all. Uh, we're seeing a crazy amount of adoption uh, in the form of uh, Noster and, and Zaps and a new way to interact on social media by sharing value for you know uh, content creation. Um, and on the Lightning front, uh, we still have a long way to go. Like we don't really have uh, de facto asynchronous payments. Um, people are really pushing to figure out how that's going to work. Uh, stuff like Bolt 12 is, you know, coming to fruition now, but isn't widely used yet. Uh, this year can be a really big year for that. Uh, on the privacy front, it seems like we're pretty close to getting blinded paths, um, which will mean really good receiver privacy for people on the network really soon. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, listen, Lightning has a lot of faults. Uh there's issues with channel closes, force closes, if you don't have a full node that's not on all of the time. Um, but hell, it's night and day from interacting with Bitcoin on chain. And uh, I just don't think that the circular economy or any sort of real commerce works without Lightning. And, uh, you know, whether most people are using Lightning self custodially or something like Zeus as their go to. Uh, that being, you know, widespread and pragmatic, that remains to be seen. But I think Lightning, at the very least, has proven that it's going to be the rails between all these different businesses and services, and it's going to be the main um, method that people make Bitcoin payments with. Uh, you know, I think uh, we're going to look into the future and say, hey, uh, you know, when we're talking to our grandchildren, for example, we'll be like, yeah, you know, back in the day, I was making on-chain transactions. I'd be like, what the. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what were you doing well, in the 2020 bear market? We were making on-chain transactions. Damn, my grandfather's a legend. Um, actually, I have one more question that you sparked. We're seeing this kind of new trend of like uh, the new shitcoin FOMO phase of L2s. What's your thoughts on all the new L2 proposals? <laughs> well, um, look, there's a few interesting things that are being discussed, right? But I think uh, for the most part, we're seeing a lot of the bad actors, the shit coiners from the last cycle, seeing the great success that we're having on Lightning uh, and feeling the need to repackage their shitty ideas into, you know, what's been a great success in a a real L2 on Bitcoin. And I think uh, that most of the things that are being pitched as new and innovative are really not L2s at all. They either have really high degrees of trust or they're completely centralized. And, uh, you know, there, there's a few exceptions, I would say, uh, stuff like, uh, you know, side chains, um, uh, still have some merit to them for sure. 
Um, but uh, it remains to be seen how they play out and how widely they're adopted. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just a whole lot of noise. Uh, I think that, you know, just like the last cycle, people are going to be sold a lot of false promises. And what we got to do is try to be loud about like, oh, hey, you got sold uh, this dream of some Solana L2 or, or whatever. It's like, guess what? Bitcoin has an L2 that works today and it's phenomenal and it's facilitating millions and millions of dollars of commerce a day. And the user experience is fantastic and you can get a wallet and onboard onto it. And I can send you money and you can use it on social media to accept tips for your payments instead of likes you get real value and uh hell i mean it, it's here today it's not just some sort of dream or, or you know promise uh lightning is has some spots i think they're largely going to be remedied with uh, a number of different solutions whether they be on the spec layer or on um, layers uh, parallel to it. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it works great. I use it every day and I love it. And there's nothing else that I'd rather be working on. Love it, bro. I, I love how how like how the developers are always like the realist and at times they're like, man, stop being so bearish. Like we're we're trying to pump Bitcoin here. And they're like, no nah, guys, like there's some issues, but we're working through it. Yeah, we're good to go. Two, two weeks out be two weeks. Two weeks. <laughs> Listen, like we have so many brilliant people in the space, you know, many that are way, way smarter than me. And, uh, you know, you just can't bet against human ingenuity. I think we're going to solve most of these problems. I think um, we're going to make solutions that have reasonable trade offs for people in different socioeconomic situations and different technical abilities. And, uh, you know, people are going to be using Bitcoin in very many different various forms. But I still believe that you know, these lightning rails that we've been putting together over the last few years are going to be the primary way or, or very well could be the primary way that, you know, we do day to day commerce in the world. And that's all going to be powered by Bitcoin. So love it. Love it. All right, Evan, let's let's pivot a little bit and let's talk about Zeus because it's, in my opinion, one one of the best Bitcoin or Lightning wallets in the space. So for the people that don't know Zeus, you know, I try to plug you every time I talk about wallets. Let's do a little TLDR. What is Zeus? What are you working on? And then also, uh, Chris was telling us about you rebranding Zeus. So maybe you can get into that story as well. But what is Zeus? What are you working on? And what do you want the people to know? Absolutely. So Zeus is the most powerful and the most private lightning wallet on the market today. And it has a whole lot of functionality. It really caters to, I would say, three different groups of users. It's perfect for onboarding your friends and family and giving you the opportunity to act as an Uncle Jim, connect them to your own node using an account. Let, don't, let, don't have them be exposed to like channel management or any of that nonsense. A, a fantastic way to onboard friends and family, as long as you don't mind. Uh, doing the heavy lifting for them on the infrastructure side. Uh, in the middle, for someone who might not have that friend or family to help hold their hand, we have a full Lightning node, self-custodial, built into the wallet now, runs on iOS and Android. Uh, you get spun up in just a minute. You get a 24-word seed phrase that gives you full control of the money. And uh, you can either go and open up your channels to anyone you want on the network, because you do have a fully featured lightning node in your pocket, or you could take the easy route and let us do the heavy lifting. You get a just-in-time instant channel from our LSP, our lightning service provider, Olympus, and uh, you let us worry about the routing. Uh, so um, you can sit back and just easily send and receive payments. And then lastly, uh, the way that Zeus really started off as is a remote controller for full node routing node operators. You can remotely connect to your node at home or in the cloud, uh, whether it be an LND or a Core Lightning node and a BTC pay server, Umbrel, Start9, Raspi Blitz, you name it. If it's a Lightning node, Zeus can connect to it. And uh, you can fully manage your routing node by opening and closing new channels, setting your channel fees, circularly rebalancing them so payments can continue to go smoothly. Uh, we try to cater to everyone in the spectrum. Uh, and all the while, we provide incredible privacy first in class, um, making sure that you're the only one who knows about the payments that you're making. 
and um, giving you that control. We want to make you feel like you're a god too. Love it. Love it. And uh, everyone's talking about the new logo, bro. So let's talk about the rebranding since Chris was so distraught before the show started. Yeah, Chris has been an OG Zoo supporter. So shout out to Chris for supporting us. And, you know, both by word of mouth uh, and financially, he's uh, he's on the donation page. Uh, for years, uh, but he was saying that he didn't like the new <laughs> logo. So I, I just like the OG stuff. I I, I love the old logo. I know it's like more like, modern, I got but the old ones right here. Uh, so yeah, this guy's got our first guy. We we got this guy off of Fiverr, right? Still pretty awesome. Then this is the one Chris really likes. Our little scratch logo made by Stephen Delorme. Uh, shout out to Stephen. Love you, man. Um, but yeah, dude, just think about it like it's like a sports team. Like this is just the retro logo. If you show up to the meetup and you're wearing this hat, you know, the ones who know are going to say, okay, this guy's an OG. He's the yeah. real user from day one. So just embrace it, man. <laughs> you know, like, uh, I'm wearing all the old stuff, <laughs> yeah, but, uh, we really wanted to capture a new look for Zeus, a very mature look, uh, because, um, you know, we needed the branding to mature alongside the product, uh, which is also maturing. Um, as we offer up, you know, uh, paid offerings with the LSP and also lower the bar barrier to entry with the embedded node, the node in the phone, that middle tier we were talking about. Um, but yeah, a really awesome story on how this rebrand came to uh, fruition. Um, it's made by a studio named uh, Sunday Afternoon in New York City. They're just off of Canal Street. And uh, I went through the Wolf Incubator last year. I was in the first cohort. Uh, in New York City, really grateful to have gone through that. It was an amazing experience. Uh, but yeah, I got asked to come speak at a Bitcoin meetup, uh, which is called um, Harlem Bitcoin. I think they've since rebranded uh, to like Uptown and Harlem. But anyway, that I, I get an invite and they're like, yo, come to Canal Street. And I'm like, wait a second, that's not in Harlem. Anyway, I show up and it's uh, this design studio and they've got like all of these magazine covers that they've done, like rappers like there's big pictures of future on the wall um they have all these things for ads they did and it looked really cool and uh one of the co-owners of it ahmed comes up to me and he's like oh yo evan what's up man i really like your product and i'm like oh okay that's cool you know maybe he's just being nice but then he pulls out his phone and he shows me his zeus page with his config and he's got like eight different configurations i have different accounts and wallets so i'm like okay you're really a user then he's like oh yeah you think that's cool well, guess what? My mom, she's like 70 years old. Uh, she runs two nodes herself and uses Zeus too. Wow. What? Let's fucking go. Let's what? fucking go. <laughs> so she, his family, right? They're from uh, Lebanon and they had gone through two or three banking crises. And she goes to her son. He's like, hey, mom, um, you know, you want me to help you get set up with Bitcoin, set up your node, you know, get, get you running? She's like, no, Ahmed, I love you. You're my son but I'm not even going to trust you with my money. I'm going to figure out how to do it myself. <laughs> Chad mom. And the, uh, yeah, shout so, out to the boomer moms. So, uh, so yeah, I, I got to know I met a little bit better. We had a great time at the meetup. We talked lightning, uh, got to meet a lot of great people. And I had looked a little bit more into the, the work that um, Sunday afternoon, the design company had done. And uh, I had seen that they had done some really prolific stuff too, like uh, stuff with Google Stadia and uh, the one that really caught my eye was Pinterest. They had done the Pinterest logo. And I'm like, oh, this is pretty cool. They do some design work. Um, you know, we were looking to revamp our stuff, make it look a little more professional. Uh, our Kelly at Wolf is like, hey, you know, I like the logo, but it, it could be a little cleaner. Uh, so, yeah, I just reached out to Ahmed and uh, we cut a deal. And, you know, we, we got to work really quickly. And I was just really astounded by the work that, his team did. Uh, they gave us just so many different logo variations and were able to help us build and curate our brand, not just the branding for Zeus, but the branding for Olympus, the LSP, and for our self-custodial lightning service, Zeus Pay. And um, yeah, we just knew that branding in the space was sort of middling. Like the average lightning wallet has some pretty like lame ass branding, just usually a, like a lightning bolt or something really simple. And we knew that if we were wanted to make something awesome, we couldn't just hold ourselves to a standard held by these other companies. Um, so I, I was just amazed by the work they did. And I think they went above and beyond my expectations. So yeah, hopefully we can get them working with some more Bitcoin companies and we could 
continue to, to push ourselves and, and raise the bar and get some better branding in the space. So I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. Anyway, I just get want- roasted by Evan here, but I still support him. <laughs> I still support him in the product. And- <laughs> uh, before we move on though, I, I got to plug this, this jacket, bro. This thing is so lit. I, I was looking at it this morning. I'm like, yo, I need to get one of these. Like these things, Dude, mine, these are cool. Uh, mine's in the mail. That's the one piece I don't have. Um, these things are cool, bro. It's going to be great for the spring, you know, like a little running, a little windbreaker action. Um, but yeah, uh, we also pride ourselves on the fact that none of this stuff is explicitly screaming Bitcoin. Uh, it's, we don't think it's going to put you in, in danger. We, we think that it looks awesome and, you know, it could be just like a streetwear brand or, or some high end fashion brand. And, um, you know, we just want to maintain that, that high quality in all the products that we ship. And, and we thought that the branding had to match and, uh, we're just really happy with, um, you know, the response we've gotten to it. Of course, there's people who love our old Chris. stuff. And, and, you know, what's not to love? Like the, the old logos are, are still awesome. Um, but, you know, they'll be poking them so their way back in here and there, just like the retro jersey or, or the throwbacks that get reissued by the teams. But, you know, that stuff's all part of our, our history and we'll never forget it. But at the same time, we also got to move forward and ship new and better products and evolve, uh, you know, just like Bitcoin's evolving. It's like how we're all evolving. Yeah, totally, totally. Um, someone's saying if there's a hoodie, they would buy it. Okay, hold on. Let me let me go back here on the store, guys, because oh, there man. is a fresh hoodie over here. There's actually a bunch of fresh hoodies, but I like I this one the most. Them. Yeah, we, we've got one that's got our logo on it like this. We've got a tie-dye one. Champion. This one's that dope. One, that one's embroidered. Um, there's also one that's got the hyper-realistic Zeus, like the, yeah, right there in the middle. Oh, that's good. I got that one on a t-shirt now. Uh, we got a couple options and, and we're going to be rolling out a couple of options too. It, it's, if you got a new t-shirt out, that's going to be out next month that people are going to love. And you know, it's, it's just been fun to, you know, go to a meetup and, and see people wearing it and, and really enjoying it. And, uh, you know, if we want the normies to embrace this stuff, we got to make it cool. You know, yep. um, the, the perception of Bitcoin now is just some sweaty nerds <laughs> that are just drenched in sweat because they're at the mining lab all day long. Um, so, yeah, let, let's make shit more relatable. Let's make it cool. Let's make it attractive. Let's lower the barrier to entry. And, uh, you know, those are things that we're trying to do with the Zeus products. Love it. Love it, bro. Well, keep keep building. Oh, not Chris. Keep building, Evan. And actually... Uh, I do this every time with our guests. What's the last two sets that you want to leave with the audience? Maybe you can hint what you got in the roadmap, whatever you want to do. What's the last word you want to give to the audience? Um, take personal responsibility. Self-custody is not easy. Um, you know, it's on you at the end of the day, but also don't be afraid to experiment and try new things, new software, new things in life generally. Uh, try to onboard your local merchants uh, we've got a point of sale, a new standalone point of sale, uh, as well as uh, you know integration with Square that we rolled out with our friends at PubKey in New York City, the Bitcoin bar. Uh, so uh, yeah, it's, we're making things uh, simpler and, and more easy for these merchants to go and accept Bitcoin. We've got uh, coffee makers and, and people who produce honey just saying, hey, I, I set up the new Zeus point of sale and I went to use it at the uh, farmer's market where I set up a table and I was accepting payments and it was amazing. And, uh, you know, those stories just really mean the world to me. Um, but yeah, uh, at Zeus, we're really just getting started. You'll see our node climbing the, the charts. Our download numbers have increased drastically since the new release, uh, somewhere between three and four times. And uh, we've got a lot of cool functionality and the features and more products on the way. Um, what can I tease? We might have Zeus working nicely with these guys. Oh. Let's go. Flexing with the Q. It, wow. might, it might work uh, with your guys' sponsor. Ooh. Um, Foundation Passport. I might work with the seed signer. Imagine, Yo. imagine you have your savings on uh, this guy and you want to take some of those savings off and move it right into a lightning channel or you want to close a channel and go right to this guy or you just want to craft an on-chain transaction and broadcast it from your Zeus lightning node 
in your phone, in your pocket, well, you're going to be able to do that too. So this is some functionality that I've been dreaming about having um, for years now, sort of like a little cypherpunk dream of mine, but now we're making it a reality. Let's go. And uh, yeah, we're just going to keep pushing on both ends of the spectrum. We want to make tools that are better for the hardcore Bitcoin users, the cypherpunks, the people who already have devices like these, uh, but also lowering the barrier to entry and making it easier, uh, more friendly, and uh, cooler too uh, for the people just getting in the space um, while also educating them about the values of self-custody and uh, why it's important to hold your own keys. Wow, that, that might be the best. <laughs> uh, and you know, I'm, I'm going to have to counter trade Chris here. I think the new logo looks way doper than the old one. But hey, you know, what do I know? I just got good taste. So Chris does it. <laughs> All right, guys, you already know the deal. It is Friday, so that means one thing, boys and girls. It is the meme review. Opti's Friday meme review. You heard it. This is my meme review. I am the captain here, so you need my favor to get on the show. I am I'm <laughs> unashamed on that, that point of contention. I am not above nepotism, but hey, tag me on Twitter. Tag me on our Telegram. <laughs> Go in our Telegram, t.me slash Simply Bitcoin. Tag me on Twitter at Simply Bitcoin TV, or you guys can tag my personal one, but try not to blow up my, my notifications too much because it drives me crazy. Anyways, I do have a a little form of nepotism my boy rope hit me in the, uh, this morning he's like hey bro uh, do you need some more memes i'm like yes i do and i'm not above nepotism on the meme review so hey if i like you your meme will probably make it on the show if you're a friend it'll most likely make it on the show if you drop some funnies it'll probably make it on the show you already know the deal tweet to the bullets meme to the artillery we are battling the great leviathan and we have memes in our tool belt truth is our power and you guys have seen the everyone in Fiat world trying to meme and they can't meme because not only do they not have good taste and no humor, they don't have truth on their side and we do. That's why our memes are more powerful. Anyways, first meme is by our boy Ropium I mean, and he just got, you know, the key emoji with the cheese emoji and he goes, uh, you know, some guy here and it goes, thank you for holding my Bitcoin for me, Mr. Trillion Dollar Company. And then the big trillion dollar company grabs the little pleb and he starts sucking him and eats his head off and drinks his blood and throws him away. Take your Bitcoin in the custody. Do not trust the middleman with your money. This is the way. Okay, the next one is we saw that, you know, Bitcoin finally got a 10K candle. It's just not how we thought it was. It was a 10K red candle and we got Alpaca SW on Twitter goes, hey, is this, is this the God candle? I, I thought the God candle was supposed to be a green candle. Wait, we got our first 10K candle and it was a red one. So such as life. It's it's so much fun being a Bitcoiner. Anyways, on that note, this next one is by Anil said so, and he goes almost dot, 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 dot. And this is just like the classic uh, American HODL meme, you know, three green dots, one red. Well, we're almost in the phase where we are all geniuses, guys. Usually it's three years of being called an idiot and one year being a genius. Well, we're almost in the genius phase, guys. And you can see here's a chart, you know, genius or what's it? I'm, I'm colorblind, so I can't tell. There's an idiot, idiot. idiot genius and then of course you know three years of being an idiot one year being a genius again three years of being an idiot as the bitcoin price goes sideways and down and then one year being a genius as the bitcoin price starts to pump and look at this we got another cup and handle going and uh, we're going to be geniuses soon, guys. Remember, we're going to be geniuses soon. All right. This next one is by at hoarding stats on Twitter. And he goes, Larry Fink down bad. And we got a picture of Larry Fink talking. He's like, we dumped GBTC hard to scare the maxis into selling. And then he's a little nervous and looking sideways. Says, Sir, the price didn't drop. No maxis are selling. And then we got Larry Fink praying like, wait. They are fighting over the appropriate pump song. What is going on? I thought we're shaking them out of the market. No, we are fighting over what is the new theme song. I, I, I'm convinced, you know, shouts out to Tatum Turn Up. It's a song called We're Back. It, it pumps. It, it's a slapper. Way better than Creed, Take Me Higher, but I'm okay with taking us higher. Okay, the next meme is by my boy Stackin. 
TR Top Roller, aka Fiat Maxi on Twitter, and he goes, "Who the f is selling instead of letting the corn rally?" And it's that one guy, you know, uh, shooting someone or the protester guy. But he's a Pepe the Frog, so it's you know it's nicer. But who's selling Bitcoin? You can't sell Bitcoin right now. Continue to hodl. And this last one, shouts out to Dylan Leclerc. Great meme. Sometimes memes are educational. And here we got Dylan Leclerc and goes, "Bitcoin all time high break study ref." reflexivity and we got reflexivity creates virtuous and vicious cycles you know price goes up which increases the perception of bitcoin which increases the fundamentals of bitcoin which makes the price go up which is the virtuous cycle of bitcoin price increases we get a legitimacy in bitcoin it gets people to build on the fundamentals and then price increases and we're doing this forever because it's going up forever you already know the deal Opti, we got another one in the chat that Evan dropped from 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 Noster, which is great. Okay, okay, let me pull this up. Let me pull this up. It real should be quick. quick. Oh, you know, oh, well, oh, on the topic man. of Noster, the Noster heads are saying you guys need more Nostering. You guys need to be on Zap stream. I'm. Oh yeah, I did. I haven't fully figured out how to do it, so I'll, I'll definitely sit down oh, and figure it out. We'll help you out. We'll get you. Yeah. Started. Exactly. Tag me, shame me. You know, shame's a good tool, good, good tool in our tool belt. Shame me into using the Noster streams. Uh, Darth, uh, our moderator in our in our Telegram group, has been telling me to do that. Sam. All right. So let, let's yeah, cover this meme. Fun. Let's cover this meme. All right. So uh, we got wow, dude, on the fly memes. Okay. All right. So we got Evan here. Literally a screenshot. Oh, with the muni in the background. Wow. Yeah, they butchered my Mars Volt the t-shirt for the muni wow. guys wow okay Fuck you guys <laughs> Love you, muni guys. I'm just kidding. okay so we got you know a boomer with his flip phone and zeus is on the flip phone and he goes oh, are we winning it's son? huge look at it look at it. it's huge and then we got then evan like, if you zoom in on the buttons on the phone there's a red button that says no and the green button that says yes there you go yes <laughs> Life is about hitting that green yes button. <laughs> oh man! And Evan, to to uh, kudos to you because I know Beauty on yells at you all the time about the the number sizes in your wallet, and you just uh, ship yeah. it. You just you're like, all right, we'll get bigger numbers. Something else now. I, I don't know. Yeah. On. All right. Anyways, we got Evan here responding. Yes, Dad, I am busy right now talking with the guys from Simply Bitcoin, and we are winning. Okay, we're winning. All right. All right, guys. Thank you, yep. Love you, man. <laughs> Was this Darth who made this? Yeah, Darth Coin made Oh, wow. He just works tirelessly to educate people. And, legend. Uh, you know, get Absolute money. legend. All right, yeah. guys, you already know the deal. Drop your meme review score in the chat on Rumble as well, and we'll read them live. In the meantime, let's go with Evan because he already had some meme review scores already. What is your meme review score for today? Um, Probably... Probably Yo, 19, 998,765 out of 21 million. So wow. really high score today. There's some bangers. The live meme really put it over the top. It wasn't perfect. It wasn't a perfect score, but it's you know, all right. I really usually don't go over 18 million out of 21 million usually so that, okay well you know i need move i need room to run and improve the meme scores so uh, <laughs> thank you thank you for not blowing up my ego you know i can't get complacent on the meme review no, all right I really, I really like the first one too with the corporation just eating. oh i know dude the uh, memes are the greatest all right uh let's go with chris chris what's your meme review because i i gotta think of one in in, in real time no, no worries. I mean, it's pretty funny that uh, Nika's not here and Opti just goes nuts with the meme review scores. But <laughs> I'm giving it Liberty Money sticker from Hodling Apparel, dope, you know, Ooh. Statue of Liberty. She holding the Bitcoin B. Uh, just love it. So that's wow. my score. Wow, that's a great score. Great yeah. score. Great score. All right. I, I know what I'm going to give. All right. My meme review score for today is the new Simply Bitcoin merch. It finally came in. I'm rocking it today. Feels good. You know, it's got nice arms. It's making me look buff and stuff and the hat's lit. Anyways, guys, continue to drop your meme review scores. And on that note, since I plugged it, guys, make sure you scan the QR code. We really appreciate the support. Go check out our merch. Uh, we got a limited supply with uh, artist collaboration with Asa Noah. 
it's going. We really appreciate you guys. It's lit. And, uh, you know, we're going to do some more collaborations. So half the sats, I believe it's half of the profits are going to go to us and Noah. So we support Bitcoin artists. We continue the circular Bitcoin economy. We're working with a Bitcoin company. Shouts out to represent to print it. On that note, guys, let's get to some of these meme reviews. Actually, uh, I'm 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 all over the place right now. I need to get the music going. So one second, guys. And my mic's messing up. Oh, what a Friday show. What a Friday show. All right, here we Good go. Vibes. Good we vibes. got <laughs> we got some meme reviews scores in the chat. Here we go. Where is the first one? The first one is... Okay, Nico's not here. So Opti's last chance to enjoy 69-420 score. 69 in the honor of 69-420. This is a family-friendly show, Copper. All right, Phil C., I give these memes. Max telling all of us, I told you so. Okay, next one, Elaine, score. Doing it right, your hairdresser yells, here comes Bitcoin when you walk in the door. Then everybody in the salon starts talking about Bitcoin. That sounds Love like that it one. actually happened. That sounds like it just <laughs> happened. Okay, next one, a more guy. top roller. Yeah, it's a live score. Next one, st- top roller. I give it a new Nerf Blaster. Okay, all right, Nerf Blaster. We have Mac Harley. Wait. Mac Harfey, meme score. I give that Saudi, Saudi United Arab Emirates trillion dollar pump. Let's go. All right. This knock, meme score. Nico's excuse for not coming on the show. I know he's slacking, bro. He's slacking on the job. Call him out. Cotton 4K. All right. Next one, Rodman Messenger. I give them one big fat Opti crush on Miss El, Miss El Salvador. Seriously, dude, you're flustered. Cotton 4K. Cotton 4K. All right. Bitcoin Beacon 77. I rate these meme one terrible State of the Union address. Oh, I know. It's so bad. Why so mad, though? Literally, old man yelling at the clouds okay oh wait we yeah we read that one we read that one all right let me go over to rumble we have one score by added compliance meme review score one so to so to shit show if you know you know okay next last one veto 1327 meme score peter schiff is a bitcoiner but lies i can confirm Actually, I can't confirm, but I can I can condone the message. All right, we didn't run out of scores. It's the buzzer. It's the buzzer. Okay, actually, we'll give this one in honor of Evan. BTC is truth. I give those memes a lightning node on your phone. All right, man. What a show. Guys, it's Friday. Thank you for showing up. Of course, Chris, thank you for filling in. Coming out of the bullpen. Coming in hot to close the week out. Chris... Where can people find you? What are you working on? All that good stuff. Yeah, so um, yeah, you can find me at uh, Chris Salamo 6 the number 6 on Twitter. You can find me over at Noster, Chris Salamo, and at BT, B.TC. Um, yeah, so kind of trying to post more on Noster. I saw I saw the hates for Noster, but I'm here for it. Uh, yeah, and then just kind of support my boy Evan over here with Zeus Wallet. You know, test it, use it, uh Open so help him with the open source code of it all. Uh, but yeah, love everything you're doing over there, Evan. And you know what? I, I'll take a, I'll take the L on the design. I do. It's wearing on me now. I, I do have. I need some OG it's gear. Good. It's just your opinion. It's all good, man. <laughs> it's just your opinion, but it's trash. No, no, no. no. I'm just lying. I'm just lying. <laughs> all right, Chris. Thanks. Thanks for hanging out with us today. Sit back and uh, behind the scenes, and, and we'll chat a little bit, Evan. Thank you so much for coming on. Great signal. Love to see like the that. improvement of Zeus. Love to see that you guys are taking an active role in the branding. We're thinking of something similar. You know, we, we realize we got to mature a little bit and make sure as it's, and I'm glad you said what you said today. Cause I constantly think this guys, the goal here is make Bitcoin cool. Bitcoin is the coolest technology ever. What's cooler than a money that cannot be stopped nor debased. It's the coolest thing ever. So Evan, thanks for coming on, bro. Again, same thing for the audio listeners. What do you want people to check out? Where where can they uh, go see what you're working on? First and foremost, Zeus LN as in Lightning Network. ZeusLN.com. That's our website. We're on iOS and Android. Check out the new embedded node, the node in the phone, uh, and give us feedback. Uh, we're on Twitter. We're on Noster. Uh, we got a Telegram chat. Uh, I'm on Twitter right there. Um, yeah, just thank you so much for having me on the show. Thank you for all the love, everyone. It is really palpable. It means the world to me. And uh, just 
there's much, much more to come. Um, hope you guys like the little teaser I gave you today. Uh, dude, dude, that was a, that was a great teaser. One more question before we go out. Do you, are you looking for open source contributors? Do you want people to participate? Always, always. Hell, you don't have to be a crazy coder. If you come on, you report an issue on our GitHub, you report, uh, you translate a few strings on our Transifex page so that people in different countries can more easily understand and use Zeus. That means so much. And you know, if, if you don't have the skills or the time to contribute in that way, we'll happily take your donations on the Zeus website. You can get your uh, social media avatar on our website and in the app, become an Olympian or a God, or even just a mortal. Every sat really means the world of a difference to us. Or hell, just use our product, use our LSP, support the business and empower yourself with the world's most powerful lightning wallet. Let's go. Let's go. All right, Evan, thanks for showing up today. Really appreciate you. We'll have to bring you back on. Actually, next time you announce something, let's bring you back on and we can plug it again. Anyways, hang out behind the scenes. We got a little delay before we end the show. Guys, you are another deal. It's the Friday show. We gave you the memes, like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. We appreciate your guys' support. We appreciate your guys' engagement in the chat. We love you guys. We're, we're so honored and humbled that we can do this for you guys, give you guys a signal, entertain you guys, and bring on cool people like Evan and Chris so that you guys can be up to date with what's going on with Bitcoin. And on that note, guys, it's the weekend. The person you are yelling at on Twitter will be there when you get back. So go outside, eat some good food, get some sun, touch the grass, call your mom and loved ones. You know, there's more to life than Twitter. But hey, I already know you guys, you know, uh, uh, you know, someone's wrong on the Internet. I got to correct them. Anyways, peace out. We'll be back on Monday. Nico will be back. This is your boy Opti. Until next time, we are Simply Bitcoin. Peace out. It was brought to you by BitcoinWell.com, a Bitcoin-only platform on a mission to enable financial independence. <laughs>